ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير يا رب لك الحمد انت نور السماوات والارض وما فيهن ولك الحمد انت قيوم السماوات والارض وما فيهن ولك الحمد انت ملك السماوات والارض وما فيهن انت الحق ووعدك حق ولقاؤك حق والجنه حق والنار حق واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا رسول الله نشهدك يا ربنا انه قد بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه فكشف الله تعالى به عن هذه الامه الغمه وتركنا على المحجه البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها الا هالك فاللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على هذا النبي الامي الامين وعلى اله وصحبه ومن استن بسنته وقتفى اثره وسار على دربه الى يوم الدين يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه في دين الله بدعه اما بعد مازال بدر اساس الاسلام رمضان مبارك now we are getting closer to the end of ramadan unfortunately unfortunately what is the meaning of fasting and what ramadan did changing for you did you ask yourself this question what is the changing happened to you since the beginning of ramadan i think now we are in 18th of ramadan if i'm not wrong is there any changing happen in your character or you are same is there anything came like from bad to better or same fasting is not only to stop yourself from eating and drinking from uh, fajr until uh, maghrib it's not like that it's not like that fasting also your heart will do fasting as well so it's not only your your uh, like uh, stomach also your heart is there anything changing to better in your heart or not for example if a person has that kind of riya and no such thing for sick of people did ramadan change him to better and now he is doing for sick of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not it's a big question big question if a person his heart now towards to his brother and sister in islam is much better or still same same level or not your relation with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now your heart is connected to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than before ramadan or still same that is the biggest meaning between doing fasting only by stopping eating and drinking or you are making fasting by whole your body everything in your body not only your stomach starting by your heart because if your heart connected to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you are doing your best to be a better person ramadan absolutely will change you for better because sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions the hadith that in among the body of human there is some part if it fine 
everything would be fine. If it's not fine, if it's bad, everything would be bad. What is that thing? Your heart. So our chance in this Ramadan, because now there is no shaitan, no shaitan, only our nafs. So if your heart are doing well, even a little bit better is alhamdulillah good achievement. Even a little bit, no problem. I'm not asking to change yourself 100%, no problem, gradually. Little bit changing in this Ramadan, next Ramadan, inshallah, much better and much better. This was the meaning of Siyam, real Siyam, not only stopping eating and drinking. Also Siyam, including your tongue. And actually it's a very dangerous thing. Because one Sahabi asked Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I want to enter paradise. What is the thing, if I do it, I will enter paradise. He say, if you guarantee two things, if you control your tongue and your private part, either man or woman, of course, not man only, man or woman. So tongue may become a reason to lead you to paradise and may become a reason to lead you out of the way fire, just tongue. So what kind of words you are speaking? Are you doing zikr every day, for example, especially in Ramadan? Are you reciting Quran? Are you making istighfar and tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or you are sitting with your friend and speaking about other people, ghiba and namima? What kind of words going out from your mouth? Are you saying the truth only? Or some people saying lie even in Ramadan? He is fasting and lying. Is it matching? Fasting online, it can't be. So we need to understand the real meaning of Siyam. Because now, mashallah, many of us uh, think like, uh, I'm like uh, one of the youngest people here. So many people here, mashallah, like experience 40 Ramadan and 50 Ramadan and 60 Ramadan. So in every Ramadan, did you really realize the real meaning of Siyam or not? Or you are taken as a traditional thing, only stopping eating and drinking only. Why Allah SWT give us that kind of opportunity every year in Ramadan? To become a better person. The more you are bitter, the more you have, alhamdulillah, by the mercy of Allah SWT, a chance to enter paradise, inshallah. The more you will be the most beneficial person to the community and society. So your tongue, tongue is very dangerous and very important. So we need to take care of our tongue, especially in Ramadan. Don't use it for anything prohibited. Only try your best to say something which make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala satisfied on you. Even I, I mentioned my last khutbah, even a, a few words can give you thousands of hasanat. Like subhanAllah, Muhammad, subhanAllah, azim. Few words. Salaam Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in, on the other hand, don't use it for something to destroy all your deeds. Lying or seeing like Kaul zur or Reba or Namima or these things. Keep yourself away from that. And keep yourself from the things which can may, may lead you to such things like that. Especially if you have someone from your friends who is always, whenever you sit with him, you speak about other people. Stop, you know, you need to be like unfriendly with that person. Wallahi. Because he will not help you in the hereafter. He will be only reason to destroy your deeds and may together go to another place, not, not paradise. Because of one person. So if you have such thing, thing like that, if you have such person like that in your life, try to like cancel your friendship with him. Also fasting is giving you a meaning of making fasting by your hands. What kind of deeds you are doing by your hands? Is it all, all your deeds by your hands making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala satisfied on you or not? For example, you are not uh, hitting people and fighting with people. Are you sure? Are you fine? You are making siyam with your hands also or not? Is your hand stealing or doing something make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala angry from you or not? That's, that's the meaning of Siyam. Your legs as well. Are your legs walking for sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come to masjid 
or to go for good place, which make you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or help the society, or to go to learn in good place to increase your knowledge, and your knowledge will be beneficial for your Muslim community, and even your country, and your family. Your hands and your legs are going to the work, and work, work by the way, is worshiping. Al-amal ibadah. If you are working, you are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are earning money for your own family to help them, is worshiping. You are taking reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by intention. If you are taking that as, in, as worshiping, it would be worshiping. If you're taking it as only money, for money, no reward. Only your intention. So what kind of deeds you are doing? And what is the changing happened to you since Ramadan starting until today? And what is your plan to spend the last 10 days in Ramadan? Now I think we have only two days to have the last 10 days, last Ashr Awakh in Ramadan, Saigun What is your plan? You have any plan for that? You know that in the last 10 days we have Laylatul Qadr. Every one of you knows that, Laylatul Qadr. And you know the reward of Laylatul Qadr? Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. Is same and equal if you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 1,000 months. Just one night. One night. But do you think you will reach Laylatul Qadr by choosing, maybe I will uh, choose night of 27, it should be like that, or 26 or 25? Do you think it's just one night you will do your best and other days of Ramadan, you're not doing anything? Do you think Allah will give you that kind of opportunity if you're not doing your best the whole Ramadan? Same as, as a person in university. Please listen to that example. If a person in university doing his best day by day to study, day by day, day by day, and listen from his professors every day, what do you expect at the end of the year? He will success or not? He will success. But another person, this is a person who wants just to pick up the life of culture and leave others. Another person, he never study anything, anything. He never attend even to the class with his professors, and only the night of test, he takes some like summarization from his friends, he study it, and he go the exam. Do you think he have chance, high chance, to have high marks? No. Sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. He gives you that kind of opportunity in Laylatul Qadr. But to have Laylatul Qadr, to be qualified, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you, you need to do your best the whole Ramadan. Not only Laylatul Qadr. That's my point. As I give the example of the study, like student who are studying in the university, every day, every day, every day. And it's not about how big deeds you are doing. It's not like that. It's about how continuously you are doing, even little. That's why we have the hadith, Umm Muna Aisha said, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu in the hadith said, Ahabbu al-a'mal ila Allahi adwamuha wa inqal. The most beloved and acceptable deeds towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is what is you are doing continuously, even if it's little. We need this, either in Ramadan or after Ramadan. We need this, focus on this. Target this. The thing, the deeds you are doing, even is it little, but you are doing continuously, either in Ramadan or after Ramadan. This is the thing, inshallah, can may become a reason and make you qualified to have the reward, the highest reward in Laylatul Qadr, as you are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 83 years without any even break, like without KOK. 83 years of worshiping. It's just one night. So we are now going closer to the last 10 days in Ramadan. We need to do our best, inshallah. I'll call you this and start from Allah. Thank you. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa la'akabatu al-muttaqeen, wa la'agwana illa ala al-zalimeen, wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa liyus salihin. وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله الصادق الوعد الأمين عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد فيا عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي المذنبة بتقوى الله تعالى One of the most uh, good things to help us to reach the ثواب and reward in لا ذو قدر to do اعتكاف 
and his sunnah from Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, he used to do it always when he went to Medina. Always. Whenever he has a chance, he make a itikaf, especially in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Last 10 days of Ramadan, if you are intending to do itikaf, listen to this advice. First, the masjid you will go to do itikaf, it should have and perform Juma prayer. Because some masjid not performing Juma prayer. I'm not speaking about Japan, I'm speaking about in general, this general knowledge. So you can take it, apply it here, or even you are going another place, in another country, you will apply the same as I'm telling you now. Masjid which performing Jum'ah prayer. That's why you don't need to go out your Atikaf and go to another masjid which perform Jum'ah. That's the reason. Okay? Atikaf is not like by exact time. We are saying the best i'tikaf is to do the last 10 days of Ramadan. What is the time? The 20th of Ramadan, 20th of Ramadan, before sunset, you come to the masjid and start i'tikaf. Until the last night of Ramadan, which we call it Laylatul Eid, the night of Eid. This is the best timing of i'tikaf. Okay. If I'm working, I'm a student, I, ha I don't have time actually, I, re hope, I really hope to do some etiquette, but I'm, I can't. It's uh, my ability, I'm not uh, like fine. I'm new in Japan, I can't do this, I can't do this. What should I do, Sheikh? At least make etiquette at night. Fine. At night, if you are too, like, extremely busy in, in daytime, come and make etiquette at night. What time of night? Start when you come to Masjid before Maghrib, Okay, we be from Maghrib. Pray Maghrib, make your iftar, stay in Masjid, pray Taraweeh with the Imam until the end, Ashan Taraweeh of course, and then make your prayers. Prayers, like reading Quran, istighfar, whatever you want to do. Until Fajr, you can sleep of course, because you have uh, another day, next day, uh, like school and other things, no problem, sleep as you want. But stay in Masjid. Your intention, you are making itikaf. So you can even make it night. You come at night, you make itikaf. If you have time, if you have enough money, better to do itikaf the last 10 days as sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Okay, if person making itikaf 10 days, is there anything prohibited? Yes, of course. First, if he went outside the masjid without reason. Again, if he went outside masjid without important and necessary reason. He just went outside. If he went outside without any reason, his atikaf or it done. He need to repeat again. This is the first point. Okay, if I have excuse, of, of like for example, I need to buy food and no one, and focus on this point, no one support me by food here or uh, any other place. Yes, you can. It's okay. Even during Atikaf, you can go out and take your food and come back. But better even to bring your food from the beginning. Or if there is food here offered, then no problem. But I'm speaking about in general, in other masjid. If necessary and no one from outside, from your family or relatives, will bring food for you, no one, no any other possibility, then okay. You can go outside, you can bring food and come back. No problem. If for Qaza al haja but of course, nowadays, alhamdulillah, we have in our mosque, we have toilet, we have everything. But in the past, some people doesn't have even toilet in the masjid. That's why they need to go outside. Also for this reason, is okay. Or very, very, very important reason, which if you don't go out to do it, it will be a disaster. Then you can go. One of the most important things in Atikaf, you are not allowed to have relations with your wife. In Atikaf, again, in Atikaf, you are not allowed to have relationship with your wife. Same for wife, of course, if she wants to make Atikaf. You are not allowed. So if someone make relationship with his wife, his Atikaf is done. You need to repeat again if you want. But he can't, like his Atikaf already finished. So we have some, like, some uh, reasons. If you want to make Atikaf, you need to be careful. Don't go out masjid if there is no really, really serious and important reason. Otherwise, no. Don't have any relation with your wife. When you make a tikaf, make a tikaf in a masjid which can perform jama'ah, can perform 
especially Juma. So you don't need to go out the masjid to perform Juma. Even though in some masjid like Ahnaf, they say, okay, even if you are forced to do such thing like that, you can go out to do like Juma and come back, no problem. But now masjid, no. So you have two options. This like summarization of Atikaf. Last point, why should I make Atikaf? The reward is huge from Allah SWT. Second, Sayyidina Muhammad SAW used to do it, so it's Sunnah. And if we love Sayyidina Muhammad SAW, we should follow his Sunnah. This is not Allah. Third, it's chance for you among the whole year to stay with yourself and to worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala without thinking about dunya. And the best way to do that, to stay inside masjid, to be isolated from the people outside, to be isolated from the ma'asi and zunub and sins and all bad things, to stay with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala here, to focus with your worshiping to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, to start to clean your heart, to start to have like plan for the, the year after Ramadan. What should you do? What you will do? How you will be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the best thing for Atikaf, you will have very high chance to reach the thawab of Laylatul Qadr. Because it's in the last 10 days in Ramadan. If you are making Atikaf last 10 days in Ramadan, absolutely, you will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in the night of Laylatul Qadr. Absolutely. If you are doing Atikaf in the last, I'm repeating again, if you are doing Atikaf last 10 days in Ramadan, absolutely, inshallah, by will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will have very high chance to reach Laylatul Qadr. Because you are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all these 10 nights, and Laylatul Qadr will be one of those 10 nights. Then it's, you know, big deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you can in one night worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take reward equal 1,000 months, which equal 83 years. Who can do that? It's a high chance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the only mercy for Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This letter card is not for other nations. Although they are all Muslims, of course, since Adam alayhi until Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But only letter card was for us. Why? Because we are the shorter in age. People in, in the past lived 200, 300, 500, 600 years. That's why they have a chance to worship Allah SWT for a long time. But for us, we only 50, 60, 70 maximum. Most of us. Some people can exceed, but most of us. 60 or 70. This hadith. Amar wa matil mabayna satin wa sabayin. Faman jawa sa salika fa huwa qaleel. This is a hadith. That's why Allah SWT, by His mercy, give us that kind of mercy. That kind of a chance. Don't lose it. عباد الله إن الله ملائكته صلى الله عليه وسلم أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا برحمتك في من توليت وبارك لنا اللهم فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا برحمتك شر ما قضيت اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا ربنا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وأكن الصلاة